Romans 12, 2 says that we are transformed, completely changed by the entire renewal of our mind. So that little teacup started out a lump of clay, and after all that stuff it went through, it became this beautiful teacup. It was transformed from one thing to an entirely different thing. And I can tell you from my standpoint, I am certainly not the person that I was 40 some odd years ago. And you know, that glorifies God. It glorifies God when people see you change and they see what God does in your life. And, and when, you, when you change from an angry person to a loving person or a stingy person to a generous person, the world needs to see us not just go to church, they need to see us change and represent Christ to them. Romans 8, 29, for those whom he foreknew, of whom he was aware in love beforehand, he also destined them from the beginning, foreordaining them to be molded into the image of his son. So, we have been foreordained by God. That means he made this decision a long time before, before we ever showed up on planet Earth. Those that belong to him, they were not gonna just get left alone to live their own little life and do what they please and act however they wanted to. We are, he, he predetermined and foreordained that we would be molded into the image of Jesus Christ. That means, here's the simplicity of it. Any person who will not let God do what he wants to do in their life, you will not ever be happy. See, if you don't let God do what he wants to do in your life, Oh, you may limp along and have some kind of a life, and I'm not, you know. You go to heaven because you believe in Jesus, not because you do everything exactly right here, but you won't be happy. I was a Christian for a long time, but I was not a happy Christian. And there, how many of you know there's a lot of unhappy Christians? Well, it's the devil, it's my circumstances, it's this, it's that, I don't have enough money. No, don't stone me when I say this, it's you. <laughs> Here's a little example I like to use. Clay, mine's not gray. Anyway, so we're gonna be molded into the image of Jesus Christ. Remember the teacup? Rolled and padded and smashed and flattened and so, you know, you just, you're like, I, I mean, I, obviously this clay doesn't have feelings, but if it did, I bet right now, it'd be saying some stuff I wouldn't want to hear. <laughs> so, this is a terrible example, but we're gonna pretend like this is Jesus. So, <laughs> <laughs> now come on, God knows my heart. So this is you, this is Jesus. All right. You got it? So all of this is supposed to go in there. Well, guess what? Uh-oh, we got a problem. There's a bunch of stuff here that's gonna have to go. And boy, we fight that, don't we? It's like, <laughs> See, I'm glad I got a bunch of people that know what I'm talking about. There you go, you made it. How many of you 
want to be spiritually mature? Okay. All right, just a few things. There is no microwave maturity. See, we say we want to get transformed, but really we want to get zapped. Well, you know what I figured out with God? He's a lot more like a slow cooker. He's a lot more like one of these crock pots that takes all day, but boy, are things tender when they finally come out. How many of you want a breakthrough in your life? Well, there's no drive-through breakthroughs either. You know what it takes? It takes number one, the Word. Number two, and I can just tell you before you ever even really start trying to grow in God, you might as well take possibly a few years and learn who you are in Christ. <laughs> you gotta know you're loved. You gotta know that your confidence can be in Him. You gotta know that you don't have to live under the law. Here's the thing, and I'll show it to you in Hebrews chapter five. Let's go there, Hebrews 5, uh, 13. Paul was talking to, the, to them about why they were still babies, babies. He told the Corinthians, he said, I wanna give you meat, but I still have to keep giving you milk all the time. So, Honestly, when you come to church, sometimes you get milk, sometimes you get meat. Now, a lot of people, babies love their milk bottle. They love that. But Christians that aren't ready to grow up, you start trying to give them meat and they're gonna spit it back at you. You say, what are you talking about? Okay, milk would be more like, God loves you, you're wonderful, you're awesome. You're amazing. <laughs> we all like that. And we all need that. We all need that. We need to hear that. Anybody that's giving you a well-rounded message, you're gonna hear some of all of that. But we also gotta have meat. And meat confronts our behavior. Meat says it's time to not act like the world. Meat says it's time to get yourself off your mind and do the things that God is asking you to do. Meat says it's time for self-control. And so Paul said, not everybody is ready for meat. Not everyone who continues to feed on milk, not everyone who continues to feed on milk, and I love this, I hope you can get this, is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness. What does he mean? How, how are you, if you're still feeding on milk, why does that mean that you are unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness? You know what the doctrine of righteousness is? It means that first, you know who you are in Christ. He has come to live in you at the new birth, and your identity now is who you are in him. That's where your confidence is, that's where your trust is. You know that he loves you, he's never gonna stop loving you, and then, you begin to work with the Holy Spirit to let what he's done in you be worked to the outside of you where people can see it. Well, that takes correction from God. That takes chastisement. That takes the meat of the word. Now listen, don't lose me, but if you don't know who you are in Christ, every time you hear something that corrects you or confronts your behavior, it's gonna condemn you. Now, I'm just gonna take my time and make sure you get this because I didn't have anybody telling me this like I'm telling you. It took me years to get this figured out. And every time I would hear something that confronted my behavior or brought any kind of correction to my life, I mean, I would just feel so bad. Nobody's as bad as me. Nobody's got as many problems as me. How could anybody need every message they hear? I need everything I hear. Come on, you ever feel like that? I don't care what you preach on, lady, I need it. Just, you know. <laughs> Could you just tell me tonight Jesus loves me? Well, yes, he does. He loves you very much, and you're wonderful, and you're talented, and God's got a good plan for your life. But grow up. 